This is Coda Radio, episode 324, recorded August 29th, 2018. Hi everyone and welcome to Coda Radio, Jupiter Broadcasting's weekly talk show taking a pragmatic look at the art and business of software development and its related technologies. This episode is brought to you by our two great sponsors, Linux Academy and DigitalOcean. I'll get you hip to them sponsors later on in the show. My name is Chris and joining us every single week, like the wise Yoda in the swamps, but instead of like some weird planet. No, no, it's Florida. Hello, Mike. Mm, you said not been to Florida recently. Yeah, I guess Very that's just, strange. Yeah, it is. That's, that's, that's what I was thinking when I said that. I'm like, well, it is kind of a strange planet. But, you know, I know now that, you know, I'm sure we're, that you're based out of Florida. We probably have some, a hardcore Florida fan base. I would just imagine. Mm, true that it is not. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't want to upset the one or two of them as it might be. Even if they are family members, I didn't want to upset them. Mike, we are gathered today to do... A little makeup for the audience last week since uh, I've been sick. Sorry, folks. Yeah, we wanted, to, we wanted to make another episode for you. We wanted to give you something a little more, something later in your week, a little more coder in your life. And we got a good smattering of topics that we like to put together on these kinds of episodes. Uh, some some uh, that are really just for me to troll Mike, really, to be honest with you, and others that uh, I think we'll get into pretty far. Maybe we should start with what you teased in our last episode, and that was you breaking your phone, because that's probably the one everybody's expecting, so they'll not have any idea what's coming next. So let me let me set the stage. $1,000 iPhone 10 with Face ID, no home button, all glass screen. Is it in a case? In a leather case it is, yes. <laughs> oh, I have the leather case, too. So the leather case did not prevent this disaster. Failed it test. So did it fall like on a rock? Like how did you get past the bun the uh, bumper around the edge here? So it landed directly on its face on quote unquote artisanal uh, <laughs> yeah, basically uneven tile, right? Like tile that's intentionally uneven to feel whatever. At the uh, Brandon Mall, thank you. It was great. Uh, so, so the irony is there's a crack in the screen. That's not the worst part. I can no longer hit buttons on the top nav bar. Hmm. So it's like pretty much unusable. Yeah. Oh, Mike, you know, you're supposed to wait another couple of weeks because we're like, we're like probably what? Seven, eight days away from announcement. I know I could literally buy a new iPhone. I get it. Yeah. So uh, I've had this happen too, you know, um, uh, not not exactly a, a destroyed phone, but uh, my partner Hadia, her phone is a uh, is like a, a 6s. I'm not sure, a seven. I don't know, seven maybe. I don't know, but it uh, it's a it's a it's a standard iPhone. It's not the it's not the eight, and uh, it has a lightning port like all iPhones do. And <laughs> hello, and when she plugs it in. Regardless of charger or cable, or if it's like a car charger or an Apple brick, it'll say charging, you know, it'll boom and it, the little icon will light up that it's charging and you're good to go. Say it's like 20%. You come back an hour later and it's like at 18%. It goes down. It's going down, even though it's showing that it's charging. It's got the little lightning bolt icon. The battery is discharging. And sometimes if you like unplug and replug, it'll start charging back up again. Won't necessarily get to 100%, but sometimes it does. And then sometimes it stops at like 50%. And then you got to like pull the lightning cable out, turn it and plug it back in. Again, tried multiple cables, multiple power adapters, tried a DC adapter. <clears throat> it's always exhibiting this issue. And I'm like, babe, you got to just keep this thing going for like three more weeks. You got to keep this phone going. I'm not, I'm not going to go buy you a brand new iPhone seven yeah. or whatever, yeah. it, eight or whatever it is, uh, just weeks before. So, um, naturally the only solution is to buy an Android phone, right? I've done nothing so far. Oh, are you tempted to go with the Android route? I was until I found out there's no comparable Android phone to buy. The uh, Now, the Samsung S8 is coming out shortly, but there's nothing. And, and here's the problem. I'm traveling to Utah in a week and a half what? From, from the date this will be out. With yeah. no phone? No, you got to get a phone. 
no, I need a phone that works. Like this phone, okay, my iPhone 10 works if I'm very conservative. Like it, it's basically a dumb phone now that I have to be very sensitive in how I touch it. Yeah. I'm living in a nightmare. You could just get a feature phone, you know, just for like a couple of weeks. Although when you're traveling, I could also that's slip my wrist yeah. in a bathtub. You I need maps and, oh man. Yeah, because I'm <sighs> driving in Utah. Let me tell you, Utah is not a friendly state to me. Have you, have you met Mormons? <laughs> I've actually and, always had a good And by time. the way, we're once again brought to us by Malfoy Jin. I'm just saying, Utah's not where I want to be lost. Salt Lake City is not bad. I tell you what, I've had some good times in Salt Lake City. Tell you have what. you? Because oh, yeah. I've had some rough times in Salt Lake City. I did get stared at a lot. Uh, I did. Yeah, I notice, got a lot of. Are you okay, sir? Yeah, I got, I got a, lot a lot of that. I got a lot yeah. of. I got a lot of weird looks, and I don't know exactly why because I wasn't doing anything. Oh, I can tell you why. Why? Because um, of me. Because because you and I. Do we stand out? Yeah, we we're. What, what what stands out? Is it is it the hair? Wait, I mean, what is have it? Have you ever seen the Have you ever seen the movie Monsters Inc? It's my, it's a Disney oh, yeah. movie. Kids love Monsters. Inc. My Great son's movie. current favorite. Yep. Oh man, it's a uh, good time when they get you and I movies. are effectively hairy blue neon green monsters in yeah. in Salt Lake City. Yeah. And we're Sullies, is what you're saying. We're walking around as giant Sullies. We're, we're giant Sullies, and 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 sometimes I'm Mike Wazowski. Like it's <laughs> it's not what you want because. I don't know. I I fear Mormons, and and I have relatives who've converted <laughs> to to the Latter Day Saints Church, really? which is Mormonism. Yeah, I'm terrified of them because my nightmare is a Mormon cop. Actually, like that's things I'm afraid of. It does sound scary. That does sound scary. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if there's a show title in this somewhere. But it does. I, I follow your point. I do follow your. Mike point. fears Joseph Smith. Right. Right. Like that's it. The yeah. Mormon I mean, so you you and I have had a very okay. Can we talk about watered down beer for a moment? Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. I got. Have you ever had? Okay. Have you ever had tap beer beer in Salt Lake City? The worst beer. Okay. In the United States, had... that is the it is it is right. so disappointing. But to drink, do that you beer. know why? The law. It's law. Like they mm-hmm. like they have a hard cap on the right. There's a municipal ordinance right yeah. on the alcohol content of beer. Right. Yeah. Producers, I actually think Utah is partially responsible for America's bad rap for beer because we have we have fantastic beer here in the States. We have a massive microbrew culture with really good beer. Tampa has 70 breweries. Yeah. Like we're. Yeah. But we have that we have that dysfunctional situation in Utah where beer manufacturers have to make these half ass one cock versions of their beers, which just taste horrible. I, I can't even describe the taste. It's it, I mean, it's it's almost like it tastes like soda water. It tastes like right. disappointment. It tastes like it tastes like sadness, right? There's, there's really because like because there's no reason to drink it because it tastes horrible and it's, it's not like shitty get you. soda. Yeah, right? it's not beer. No. It's not soda. It's something awful in between. Yeah, yeah. So, I was shocked. I mean, I knew about like, it, but I was shocked. When I die, and frankly, go to hell because, yeah. I will end up in Salt Lake City. Like that. So like, I'm not enthusiastic about this trip. I'm, I'm, pr- I'm pretty unhappy. You know, as long as you don't drink the beer, I think Salt Lake City is pretty great. You know, I think it is. Yeah. W- order two martinis and wait till the cops follow you around. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's just hostile territory. We should move on from this. All right. So, uh, so your phone broke. <laughs> And Mike's an alcoholic, but we give yeah, yeah, those are the two two major points here. Yeah. Now, uh, here's the one that I don't know if we shared with the class is you, and maybe you told us, but I don't think you've given us the review yet. Recently picked up a new workstation, a new portable workstation, a Galago 2018. You bought the original Galago uh, 4K, had some fan issues, had some temperature issues. So I was surprised to hear that you went back to the new Galago. But from your initial impressions, it sounded like they had made some revisions to the model that uh, were pretty good. So now I'm curious, now that you've had it for a couple of weeks, what's it been like using the new Galago? Yeah, so I, I got the new Galago. Um, I got the 1080p, not the 3K version. Okay. Or rather, 4K version. Apologies. Um, and I have to say, matte screens are the way to go. Ah. The 1080p screens matte. Part of it's because a lot of Linux apps just don't have awesome 4K coverage. Yeah. 
And it's a lot for the computer to drive that display too. Right. And and just like a mat is prettier. The battery life is better than the 4K version. Is this you're gonna be uh, is this gonna be your Utah rig? No. Mm. And I like the entrapment. I like mm. the entrapment. So why is that? Because the product I am unveiling at Utah is a Windows based product. Oh. <laughs> so my Mac my MacBook will be my Utah rig because it has a Windows you know, partition. You know that tickles me, right? Yeah, that tickles me. <laughs> In the words of my my distant cousin Bane, necessary evil. So this is like your office daily driver. This is what you're right. like. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to go for it. All right. We're going to talk about the cute company for a moment. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. I spent months writing this product in C++ to run on Linux. It was going to be a huge thing for us. We were going to unveil it and quit radio. It was going to be fabulous. It was going to be great. I was going to give you some money. You could have done some ads on Linux. Uh, yeah, that sounds plugged. good. I like all those Linux, things. Linux action news. It was going to be awesome. And then capitalism <laughs> oh not that again those dirty dirty money grubbing <laughs> says you know how much money, money they money. <laughs> yeah yeah but i'm i'm hoping to make some money yeah yeah not they want to make more All money per them. unit than i was going to charge per license right? right like i would literally owe the money every time i made a sale like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What the hell is wrong with Q? Look. So you were you you're buying this Galago and you're thinking this is my future right here. This is I'm going to be it. like yeah. we're going to build Linux and Windows cross platform software because you yeah. know we're in the aerospace industry. So yeah, ignoring Windows is is effectively suicide, right? Or you, you got no choice. That's who your customer. The, that's what your customers run. The future is going to be Linux, right? I got, like the future is Linux. Mm-hmm. Even Microsoft knows that. <laughs> So, right. So I'm thinking, okay, we'll write it in Qt for Linux and then we'll like effectively backport to Windows. All right. And I spent three days in, in, and we talked about in a previous episode, in DLL hell, making it all work. Yeah. And it worked. It was fabulous. But great. Everything worked. We have a fully functioning binary uh, written in Qt. That's awesome. Feels good. But the business deal with the Qt company. Just like it, it was basically um, if I can channel my New Jersey roots here and uh, forgive me, uh, iTunes, go get your fucking shine box, kid. <laughs> we just don't make enough money for them to even care to deal with us. Yeah, like, it, it's it's crazy. That is an old saying. Go get your shine box, kid. Yeah, <laughs> that is so Jersey. <laughs> it is very Jersey. I like how you cleaned it up. So we ended up in this position where while Linux is the future. Windows is a requirement for right now to go. That to seems the like show. that's yeah. Ooh. You could, you know, you we're, could. We've, we're already committed, right? We're already we're already like married to the show. I can't back out. I'm I'm hooked. Yeah, man. So, so rewritten in .NET, it was. What do you think about Windows 10 dual booting on the Galago? I haven't done it yet. I bet you um, it works better than it does on the MacBook. You know I, mean? I wonder why you say that. Because it's because it's it's garbage on the MacBook. First of all, well, the, boot camp isn't that terrible. It is. Come it on. is like the the okay, fans why? are crap. Like this, your MacBook constantly is way too hot. It's because there's no thermal management under Windows until you start getting to the really critical stuff. It just never has felt right. It just it, like the boot camp drivers are trash. They're just the worst software. You gotta you gotta run that one single executable to install everything, and they're all garbage. And at the end of it, you get a machine that's got like a somewhat less functional trackpad, poor thermal management. It just feels like forced on there. But the Galago, I mean, that's just standard Intel hardware with a standard thermal system and a standard fan management system. Like it's all just Intel spec. So Windows 10 would just work with natively with all that stuff. You know, because you know there's models of that Galago yeah. sold by other OEMs that are running Windows. You know, so I so so this is the sick irony of this whole problem. I would have bought a Galago with a bigger hard drive had I true, known. True, true, right, yeah, like, right, right. I do recall you kind of got um, a smaller one because you didn't need a big one. But, but but you asked me about the Galago, and I decided to go on a rant about cute those money grubbing pricks from Boston, the literal worst place in the United States, <laughs> um, other than Salt Lake City. So we should continue on. So you're liking um, it though for what it is. I'm liking it. Did you keep I like pop it on there? Did you switch off pop? What's going on there? I'm I'm on pop. I am running basically an environment 
that is effectively as close to the stock as you can get. Now, I want to hedge that a little because I've done some changes. Hmm. I did get really drunk one night. Sure. And mess with your computer. And install as we KDE. Do. <laughs> I installed Plasma. Oh, Chris, I installed Plasma. <sighs> it's tempting, I know. And let me tell you something. Oh, Plasma is not just tempting. Plasmas leave your wife and kids and never look back. Yeah, you can lose a lot of time. You can, yeah. Plasma's nice. I I question the wisdom of pot being based on gnome after looking at plasma. You know, I had a I had a I had a back and forth on Twitter with a journalist at Forbes who's been today uh, before we yep. the show uh, yep. that has been trying out a bunch of different Linux distros and he just popped on plasma and uh, loves it too. And I'll tell you if you if you try it and you like it, it's it kind of behooves you to install. Kubuntu or another spin that is plasma first. So that way it's a little cleaner. Uh, like, yeah. we, you know, terminal launches the right con, you know, the, the cute version of it and all. It is, it is a great desktop system. I agree. It is nice. You throw that on there. You got a nice screen. You got a good keyboard. That's a, it's a good setup. It sounds like. How's the heat? How's the heat and fan? How's that? So this is where we get into a, a, some conversation. Mm. So I still have, I was able to repair my uh, damaged original Galago. Now, it's slightly damaged still, so we can take this with a grain of salt. My subjective analysis is that the fan on the non-high DPI uh, new Galico comes up much less frequently. That makes sense. But it does come up. Oh. And the battery life, while being better, is not like MacBook good or MacBook Pro good. It's... It's good enough, right? That's what I would say. I follow. That's a little disappointing, but I follow. It, 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 yeah, it's. I'm happy with the machine. I'm not in love with it. You know, if I put it against my 15... I mean, it's unfair to put it against my 15-inch Mac Pro with a designated graphics card. But it... Like, it's weird. It has a better keyboard for sure, mm-hmm. but the battery life definitely suffers. Hmm. And I, I was wondering, so would you say, so I know you you kind of, you bought a pretty reasonable one uh, for me because I would want some storage for multiple distros mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, for me, that, that price is mine like at $2,161. Do you feel like that's a fair price for the rig? Would you, would you spend that kind of money on it for more storage and an i7? It has the i7 with 32 gigs of RAM. <clears throat> is that is it a twenty one hundred dollar computer? I I think it it's a so so this is a you're you're getting to a fundamental problem I'm having of should laptops be a main development computer or not? Mm-hmm. And what I'm realizing is, you know, maybe Mac versus Linux is not that important. I mean, Windows is garbage because it's Windows, but I'm just kidding, folks. Um, Like, let me give you an example. I plug, like, right now I'm broadcasting on my MacBook Pro. Right. The minute I plug it into my monitor, it down clocks. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, and I mostly work in clamshell mode, plugged into a monitor or into a monitor mode using the laptop screen as a second monitor. It. Well, and that's not a Mac problem, right? Most computers do that. I think the Galago will do that. So is that a reasonable computer? I guess if you intend to use it as a laptop. But I, I would almost question, and I'm more questioning myself than you, Do you need? does your portable computer need to be that powerful? Hmm. Like, have, have we approached this question in the wrong way? I think the assumption's always been more power is better. Um. <clears throat> yeah, but ba- see, battery life is becoming a bigger and bigger issue for me. I feel like my dual core XPS 13 is way too slow these days. Web pages are not loading fast enough. Electron apps are too laggy. Like, it boots still fine, shuts down super fast. Like, the disk seems fine, like doing updates, packages installing, all perfectly fine. But <clears throat> I do feel like I'm getting lag in the UI on both Chrome and Firefox a lot more these days to the point where. Sometimes it makes it a little annoying to use, and even to the point where sometimes I've even seen input delay when I'm like f- filling out a form or something like that. So that is not fast enough. And so that's why uh, I've decided to get a ThinkPad T480 myself. It's ordered now. 
Um, <clears throat> it is ordered, and I think it's going to take them like three weeks to make it because it's a custom order. And that's going to be a 14-inch screen, but with uh, you know pretty high-end components. Because uh, I was trying to get the most out of this XPS 13 I could, but it really has just felt too slow. And because I'm pushing it so often, the fan has been going so much now that it sounds like the, the fan's starting to grind, like the fan's going out. It's only got one fan in it. So if it goes, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, that's that. Yeah. So that was sort of my threshold. You know, I, I didn't have like a, like a metric. I was trying to figure out a metric to measure, some benchmarks or something that I could get some data around. And I couldn't. I never got there. Even on Unplugged, I asked the audience, I'm like, what do you guys use? Like, what tools? And I talked about Open Benchmark and how you could use that. But it just didn't really work. It was at the end of the day, I'm like, this computer just doesn't feel fast enough. I'm waiting around too often for this computer. And in part of it, it's because the web applications, the damn Electron and web apps, have just gotten bigger. And I'm not really doing anything different other than just running more complex online applications. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, I and... Yeah, so that I, I went with the T480, although uh, I was I, I did consider the Galago uh, for a bit. It's a, it's also a great machine. So and I'm glad to hear that uh, it seems like it's better overall. I would be curious to know how Windows 10 works on that thing. Yeah, I might have to dual boot. I mean, the the problem I'm facing is my dogs also hate the cute. Now, <laughs> They're barking at cute right now. Yeah, I, like I don't want to like bash on cute. Like I said last uh, episode, I, I have invited a, a, a rep from the Q company to come on, and, and they have not responded. I There is no reason I should be doing major WPF.net development. Other than, as a small business, I can't afford their license. Right, they sort of forced your hand on what tool you're going to use. Right, they, they gave me no choice, because I'm already married to the show. We talked about it uh I think last episode in Utah, or was it this episode? I have no idea. Um, and my sadness with their water down there. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it seems weird to me that we don't have a first class, completely open source uh, Windows slash Linux cross platform software development platform. Well, I guess we do, that, supposedly. It's just not the one you wanted. It's the hero you needed, but not the one you wanted. Which one is it that I wanted? Don, well, you wanted to use Qt. But .NET is offering you a solution. It's just not the one you Well, want. and this is the irony, and this is where I want to take this conversation. Ironically, Xamarin right now, you can compile to GTK Sharp and run on Linux. Yes, right. Right, so the answer to my question is actually .NET. Yeah. Um, it feels weird. To, like, it feels like I cringe. You know, I get a little nauseous. It feels... It feels odd because I think about Qt and I think that's like, some, you know, that's the KDE project mm -hmm. that's in the Linux ecosystem. But it turns out that they're like more hostile to a small development shop that wants to be Linux focused than Microsoft, which is like weird. You know, <clears throat> so I'll pick up on that in a sec, but I'll, I'll say this just as an aside is I have always heard rumblings of, oh, the licensing around Qt's really strange. It's something you need to look into. It's a concern. And I never really got any specifics on it until this event. Um, and I think, I think so. I, I, know, I know this, it has a rep, but it's really always been very vague. Um, and it turns out you don't really find out until so look, you go Let to me unvague it for you because I didn't sign any NDAs. There are two types of licenses. There's a straight commercial where you pay per developer, which is expensive but kind of reasonable. It's like taking a merchant in advance loan. It's really expensive, but you get how they got there. Yeah. Um, the problem I hit is that they felt, and I was cringing at the developer license, is that they felt what we were doing, um, and I'll in a few weeks I'll, I'll be talking about the product on the show, they considered it an embedded product, even though it's running on you know, straight Debian and straight Windows 10. They consider it an embedded product, which they have a per unit license fee mm. plus an initial cost, hmm. which was completely unsustainable for us. Sure. And they considered using it in this manner was an obvious violation of the, the LGPL, no matter how we did it. So that, okay, that does that does clear it up. So that, that, that left us in it, because people have been tweeting at me. That left me in a position of if I went forward and just like asserted the LGPL. Yeah. You know, I can't go to court against Q, right, and win, because I don't, I just don't have the capital. I just don't have enough money. 
my whole product that I've been working on for months would be open source and I would just like not be able to sell it. Philosophy aside, that's just not the model I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if that, I mean, feel free to ask any questions you want, Chris. I mean, that, but that's like the long and short of it. Well, I'll do this. Let's take a moment and thank DigitalOcean, and then I'll come back and ask. do.co slash coder. That's where you go to sign up for a $100 free credit for new accounts over DigitalOcean, and then you can try out the platform for 60 days with that $100 credit. Try out one of their mix and match droplets where you can set up the different resources that you need for your specific application, or one of their high CPU or high memory droplets. That's why over a million developers trust DigitalOcean because they make it so easy and so quick to get started, which means you go from, hey, I got an idea, to it's actually up on the web and ready to test in five minutes. And that kind of compression of time means you actually get to do it, you actually get to try it, and you build momentum so quickly with these projects. It really makes the difference. And you can get started with a $100 credit at do.co slash coder. They have industry-leading price to performance. An example, my favorite rig, three cents an hour. Beautiful. Four gigs of RAM, two CPUs, 80 gigabytes of enterprise-grade SSD, three terabytes of transfer, and you can get it going in less than 55 seconds. You can do an entire deployment of an application stack, or you can just deploy the base system and get started. Plus, they have a lot of really good documentation to help you get even further with DigitalOcean. Just a couple of days ago, they posted how to use Node.js and GitHub webhooks to keep your remote projects in sync. You could get this running on a DigitalOcean droplet and take care of this for you in... Man, this is nice looking. And one of the beautiful things about DigitalOcean, just real gorgeous number all over there, is their tutorials. Really well crafted, well put together. Not only, I mean, not just from like a structure standpoint, but from a formatting standpoint too, to really make it clear this is code, this is something that needs to go in a config file, and then it's all itemized out too. It's the best documentation on the web. So try it all out by going to do.co slash coder. And a big thank you to DigitalOcean for sponsoring the Coda Radio program. So I guess my question to you is this. Um, <clears throat> how big of an oh shit moment did you have when all this math comes due? Okay, this is why I bought the Galago. Shit, now I can't use that. Oh crap, we've already committed to present at this show in Utah. And now the the the, the, the demo app that we have built, uh, we can't use. And we got to come up with something else. Um, and we have a couple of weeks to do it. Like how big of an oh shit moment was that for you? Let's just say those those boxers will never see the light of day. A lot again. of poo came out. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad situation. I mean, and it was, yeah. Oh, I man, mean, that must have been a really stressful couple of days, I imagine. It was rough. I'm sorry, dude. I can only, jeez. Like, my coder therapy sessions were canceled. I know, right? <laughs> right, so <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was, uh, but the whole application got rewritten, and it's, frankly, done now in .NET. So you've been, how much writing of .NET have you been doing on Linux itself? Some. Okay. A little bit? So, oh, how much? So just a little bit. Well, so like backend logic is backend logic, right? The, the places where you get into trouble is the uh, user interface. I imagine that is very much the case, actually. Expe yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, like, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So you uh, you teased me with some large scale WPF de development. I'm assuming then that this is all part of this. This is part of this. Yes, the okay. end application is a WPF application, uh -huh. which you know we had Platform Uno on a few weeks ago. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. They do not currently support WPF. Yeah. The irony, though, is in parallel to all of this, Xamarin, the little the little busy bees over there have been working on a GTK Sharp uh, compile point and a WPF file point, compile point rather. So this may all be able to be rectified by simply refactoring a bit from WPF native to Xamarin. Okay, that's not like, you know... Life it's not terrible. Yeah, it's not like... Right. Ending. Yeah, that's, that's recovering. You know, this is another way to put that. The C sharp code goes into garbage. I mean, sorry, the, the C code from Q has already gone into the garbage, which is kind of disappointing. I think I hear your MacBook over there working hard right now. My MacBook's real upset. <laughs> are you not, yeah, my, you're not running Windows on that thing, are you? 
I'm not. It's just running Firefox and Chrome oh. in, in one Chrome tab. Like, yeah. I hate I hate computers right now. I can't even. You know, all I have to say, all laptops kind of suck right now. Yeah, right? But, uh, it's, yeah. It's, the best machine is the machine down on the t- on the floor with a monitor right. and keyboard like attached to it. Yeah, I have to say it's. You know, I know System76 supposedly is coming out with a desktop that they're manufacturing in Colorado. Yeah. Apple in 2019 may or may not have a Mac Pro. Right. I think those are going to be the two machines I looked at. Because I'm just getting real tired of worrying about thermals. I'm getting real yeah. tired of, yeah. Yeah, battery like, it, life. And just, you know what? Like, get a Chromebook, get 12 hours of battery life, and that's your expectation. I just, I'm so yeah. there. And maybe this will finally solve our problems that we've been having with these things. Like, I'm here recording, and I'm thinking to myself... You know, I, my best machines in the studio have been these desktops because they last for like five or six years too, it's running 24-7. Laptops don't hold up to that. And these things never get a yeah. break. They're always going. They're always on, always ready to record. And they're still great. They're still reliable and they still feel fast. No, I I, 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 I mean, my laptop dream, I mean, I can hear my fan through my headphones talking to you. <laughs> I can hear right, it. And it's a Mac. It's not even the Galago. Yeah. So you can't even say it's like the Galago has a bad fan. It's the freaking MacBook. Yeah, yeah. it's that Chrome yeah. tab because that Chrome tab eats up the CPU. It's the one tab I'm running with you to do the show, right? Like, Yep. Yeah, it's – there's <laughs> – there's so much wrong with the way things are right now. No, I know. No, but but all, all kidding aside, right, like I am deeply disappointed that the, uh, that the stuff with Q didn't work out. Yeah, man, I could only imagine, like, I mean, you got, you know, not only do you have, like, this, this, like, like, this sensation, oh, man, I bet on the wrong horse, but also, like, now you gotta, you gotta do this whole, like, what are we gonna do now? How long did it take for you to sort of refactor? Was it, was it, was it, uh, was it sort of an A, B thing? As in, well, we have no other choice but this, or was there some sitting around thinking, what do we do? Can we LGBL this thing? Can we? There was, yeah, there, there, so a lot of things happen in parallel. There was an initial version of this written in Xamarin, actually. Ah, okay. And it was, well, do we just do we just embrace Xamarin, right? In Xamarin. Whatever you want to call it, right? <laughs> that that got effectively vetoed by me because Split Xamarin's efforts. garbage. Yeah. Right. Like well, Xamarin's not garbage, I take it back. But like Xamarin for the high performance aerospace use case is a tough choice right now. So we ended up going with um, WPF, taking some of the C sharp logic over for the Xamarin version, and that was purely a practical decision of our potential end customers in this industry. Ultimately, while they're moving to Linux, they ultimately initially care about Windows. And WPF is a technology like we looked at Avalon, uh, rather Avalon UI, which is an open source UI project to bring uh, UWP to all the platforms. We looked at Platform Uno, but ultimately, as a small company working in a big space, I felt that I very strongly that I need to mitigate the fear, right, to sell our product. Come back to the mic. Come back to the mic. Uh, so, so yeah. you fear of the team or fear of the customer? Fear of the customer, right. Okay, so the customer would look at that sideways and go, what the hell is this? Right. So we ended up rewriting the UI in WPF. Ah, so to, to make it safer, essentially, to the customer. Nobody gets fired for buying a WPF app, right? <laughs> oh, man, that's true. Yeah. So we ended up going in that direction. Huh? Um, okay. It seems pretty rational. It seems sad. Yeah. A compromise. I would have preferred to even go UWP, to be honest. Hmm. It, you know, I feel like in some way, not that this is the double episode of picking on cute but cute is somehow like ignoring a market that would be willing to pay them several hundred dollars a month yeah but I, like they i have also heard that sentiment from others yeah like i i would have been much happier coming on the show today and saying we are a linux shop we're running c plus plus yes we cross compile to the windows and yes we you know 90 percent of our customers are using windows devices but you know we're a linux shop but in reality the licensing fees were just unacceptable. I'm curious as to what you've heard. I've definitely heard that they that they could come up with something that is way more compelling to small business and solve a lot of this. That is that is a sentiment I've heard from people at conferences a lot, <clears throat> where I've gotten a lot of the side by grousing that 
never was quite clear to me until we've, we've had our conversation. I'll tell you, man. I'll take the liable, liable suit. Yes. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, things can change, but it sort of doesn't matter. Like the window of opportunity. Like, let's just, I was just thinking like maybe down the road, they'll come up with some sort of like small business competitive offering. But because, you know, really the th- reason why I think that'd be great is Qt is stronger as a platform. The more of it that is out there. The more the more people that are shipping cute apps, the more people that are developing cute software, the larger the community, though, just um, what, what is the right word to put it? It's a it's a it's a, there's a tangible benefit. That's probably the way to put it. There's a real tangible benefit to the cute company for more people to be shipping cute apps. So it would seem like if the opportunity came up for them to say, OK, here's a small business. Here's a small business package. That would be a very compelling offering that would probably get a lot of traction. But it's it's too little too late for you, isn't it? Well, it's a done deal, right? I mean, I, I'm going to demo the software in a week and a half now. And uh, we're by the time this is on the RSS feed, probably less than a week. So it's, yeah, I mean, we're married to .NET and we're married to C Sharp. You're already going uh, to the event as far as it's concerned, really. I mean, you're already right. back. I mean, <clears throat> even, even if this product fails, it would be hard for us to go to Q. And, and, and frankly, I think this product is going to do okay. Well, I hope so. That sounds, from what I've heard off air, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, I'll take a moment and I want to thank Linux Academy. They have something really cool going on uh, starting on September 4th. And I think it goes till the 27th of 2018, tw- September 27th. I'm not totally sure. They'll have details, though, starting September 4th on their website. They're offering a massive discount. Full year subscription for $2.99, which is a fantastic deal. It's the best deal they've ever had. And it's it's a great value. So I wanted to let you know about that. Go to linuxacademy.com slash coders. That's got an S on it to get that. Uh, you could sign up right now for a free seven-day trial, get an idea of what the platform is, what's available to learn on there. And then when that promo comes out on September 4th, um, you could jump on it and you could lock it in for a year at two ninety nine, which is such a good deal. Uh, so check it out, linuxacademy.com slash coders. Also stick around on their YouTube channel. <clears throat> Excuse me. LinuxAcademy.com on YouTube. You know, LinuxAcademy.com on YouTube. Go search for LinuxAcademy.com on YouTube. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. There's going to be some stuff on that channel that I think will be applicable to our audience specifically uh, in the next few weeks. YouTube.com slash LinuxAcademy.com. And uh, then go to LinuxAcademy.com slash coders on or before September 4th. And you can grab that two ninety nine promo. I believe it runs until the 27th of this month. But again, details will be on their website and you can sign up right now for the seven-day free trial and just start to get a taste for the platform. And then next week, get the deal. LinuxAcademy.com slash coders. Big thank you to Linux Academy for sponsoring this year. Program. So have you ever, have you ever fantasize about like, what if you're in a totally different field? And I have. Yeah. Yeah. What's yours? What would be your like, if, if like, you know, uh, a universe B version of Mike that never becomes a developer you know, poetry totally teacher, different. school teacher, school teacher, poetry. Wow. Mm-hmm. That'd be yeah. school. I could do teaching. Definitely. I, yep. I feel like I worry for me that it'd be something like sales, you know, like I get into sales or something. Cause I think you do have that voice. Yeah. You I have, sell. Yeah. 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 I can sell. You're, you're a seller. That's, <laughs> so I mean, that would just be horrible. Like no, no offense to salesmen because a, a good salesman is a very valuable thing. No, a lot of offense to salesmen because I have not yet to meet a good one. So. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> You're talking to one. No, I'm telling you, like, I worry that's what it would be, but I think it would be like a like a used car salesman or something horrible. Um, if I had a fantasy where, like, it would never work out, it would be running my own barbecue. You know, like a, like a hole-in-the-wall, slow-cooked pit barbecue where I just have, a like, a stable customer base that comes in on the weekdays for lunch, and I only serve lunch and dinner. Uh, and then, and then maybe start doing a little breakfast. Uh, do you have a liquor license? I mean, I think I do in this fantasy. Yeah. Well, then I'm there, baby. I'm your <laughs> best customer. I think I would. I think I would run a pretty good barbecue place. I'd only have a few things at first. You know, keep it real focused, real narrow, and nail those products. Um, that's my fantasy. But I got to tell you, I think the reality is I'd be I'd be like a software engineer, sales lead, or something. Like that. I think it's what I would do. It's like the worst job on the planet. Because I already went into IT, so I've got to avoid that. But, you know, and I'm already in broadcasting now. And so I got to avoid that. So it'd have to be, I mean, that's, you know, that's a couple of, that's a couple of my go-tos that I can't choose from. So uh, you could tell us, audience, what you think our uh, alternative universe careers are by going to coder.show slash 
contact. And if you got a good one, I'll try to read it on a future episode of the Coder Radio program. Our record schedule is going to be a little funky uh, for the next bit because you heard there Mike's traveling and doing this thing. And it's a, it's a long event and he's going to be gone for a bit. So when we get an opportunity, we'll do some doubles and we'll keep the feed going. So go to coder.show slash subscribe for all the ways to get new episodes. Now, before we wrap, do you have any like tools or like tool chain stuff you want to cover? Because we always tend to do that when we do these doubles. Any new uh, – I mean we mentioned Scoop last week, so we can't use that. We mentioned Scoop last week. Yeah, any yeah. new tools you've been working with in this process or anything like that? Yeah, kind of. So, geez, I don't even know if I want to mention this, but I, I took a quick look at uh, – Oh, geez, what is it, GitPod or... Oh, yeah? Yeah, GitPod.io, that's what it is. I'll drop a link in the show notes. Yeah, drop a link. They're in beta yet. Yeah, I've heard about this. Yeah, they're one of these cloud IDEs, and I I looked at it in the context. Let me give you some context. Uh, Again, I have an 11-year-old brother now, and and he's interested in learning coding, so, you know, but he's in New Jersey, I'm in Florida, so, you know, there's some challenge there, right? Like, working with him on assignments... Um, this is a cloud IDE that integrates directly with GitHub. Um, it seems pretty powerful. I've played with it some. It reminds me a lot of, remember Cloud9 we featured a few years ago? Yes, it is. Yeah. It seems like a Cloud9 on steroids. The, the catch here is they only support so many languages. Okay. Very few, actually. So JavaScript, Java, Python, Go, PHP, Rust, Ruby, yeah. C and C++, JSON, Docker. And obviously, HTML and CSS. They don't support much else, mm. but they they directly tie into a GitHub GitFlow workflow. Yeah, that's like their key feature, really. Yeah. So, so to me, I mean, this is not how they build themselves, and I would love to have someone from GitPod on the show to explain it to me. But to me, this is the ultimate teaching tool for a uh, oh, you know, a child like like my brother. Sure. Right? Huh. Yeah, so it's 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 tightly integrated with GitHub. It's where you start actually with this. You have to use GitHub, right? It's it's you have no choice. Yeah, yeah. And then I mean, it, they have an enterprise version that you can host yourself, but that's you know. This is pretty cool though. How's the how's the UI? All that stuff. Pretty usable. You know what? It reminds me of VS Code. Like okay. it's okay. Honestly, I we've experienced some latency issues. My brother is running a older MacBook that I gave him, uh, like a twenty. Oh, geez. Let's say a 2014 MacBook Pro 13 inch uh, with eight gigs of RAM. But, he, you know, he I give him my hand me downs. He's doing like it works for him fine. Yeah, right? he's right. You know, he's right. You know how I mean, you remember kids, right? I'm sure you have Dylan. You know, they're writing their little games, right? Whether it's, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. They're fine with it. His laptop is not a performance machine at all. And he's fine with it. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm sure as he gets older, he'll want something faster. But yeah. yeah, this is nice. And so it's got an integrated chat, too. And it makes it, yeah, I, it doesn't make it clear who's working on what portion and whatnot. It, it does. I find it works significantly better in Chrome than Firefox. Ah, uh-huh. I've had a few. A little, yeah, which is a little annoying to me. But other yeah. than that, yep. it's, it's a, uh, I mean, it's pretty powerful. My brother and I, like, I can't speak to the Go support or the Java support. We've been working mostly in ECMAScript slash JavaScript. Um, but yeah. And, and also it supports Python. So any of the other parents out there, I know 99.99% of our listeners are um, frankly corrupted by the snake and love Python. So, yeah. Does not support Ruby, though, somehow. Um, oh, right, it does. Oh, oh does it doesn't it? support – it partially supports Ruby. Yeah. I have, uh, I have, been, I have been using Chrome. More and more again because of several applications and sites that I use that just seem Same like they, they slow yeah. down the Firefox UI. The whole browser UI gets all leggy. I've been having st- – so since I've been working on my Mac for this WPF project because yay Visual Studio for Mac and VMware, um, I've been having stability issues in Firefox mm. because of just like certain applications seem to just require Chrome. And, and, and it, it reminds me of IE6. I don't, I don't – I hate saying that because it feels very old manny. But I mean, come on, Chris. You remember like works oh, yeah. best than I. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I do. Oh yeah. I do. Yeah. I'll give you a couple of tools that I've been using, just really quickly. Um, I guess I'll really one. Um, but I've been using it to use multiple tools, and uh, you may know about it, but I'm going to remind you in case you've forgotten. It's called Natifier. Natifier makes any web page into essentially a, an Electron app. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. But it's great because, so, you know, you can point Natifier, 
mail.google.com. And I can have multiples with different icons and different logins and in their own individual windows, which I find really great for managing multiple Gmail accounts or whatnot. And it's just really simple because it pulls down like their uh, uh, web, web app icon. So you can, you know, you can actually use the official logo icon for the application and it works on, uh, I think, all the platforms. I mean, I've obviously been using it on Linux, but uh, I, yeah, their uh, GitHub page shows it on a Mac. And it's nice. It's simple. M- Sounds like you've probably heard of it before, Mike. And it just essentially wraps up websites in Electron, which I know that's everybody's favorite thing. But if it gets a heavily used web application out of a tab in my web browser and lets me have my own set of credentials in that window and all of that, it's a win for me. So, yeah, I'll link to that, too. Yeah, sounds, yeah that, no, that's really good. In the notes, it'll all be at coder.show slash 324. Is this which 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 episode is this? Yeah, three, two, four. <clears throat> two, four. They run together. Yeah, so I've been I've just plugged in like a few different Google apps into that and a couple other things that I just I find that to be intensely useful. There's a couple others out there. We talked about another one on Linux Unplugged this week, but Mr. Dominic, I that was my tool. Um, I don't really I, I don't really have much others other than grousing about Firefox, which I I could do for a whole another episode, but. Yeah, I want Firefox to be better than it is. Yeah, yeah, I just want it to be great because I want there to be that strong competition and I want a company like Mozilla to be putting a product out there where their primary motivation is an open web and not commercial dominance of the internet. So Google frankly scares me. Yeah. Yeah, and their and their leverage of Chrome is one of the scarier aspects of Google right now. <laughs> so it is a big yeah. problem. Oh, too bad it seems to I mean it just seems to work better for me and I find that intensely frustrating Still I feel sticking. that way about Mac OS oh 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 I'm sticking with Firefox for now but when I'm on other platforms other than Linux I tend to use Chrome more I don't know all right Mr. Dominic uh, give somebody something else to go get if they want a little more mic in their life during the week uh, go to at Dominic on Twitter and at themadbutter.com. Hey, how about that? You can follow me. I'm at Chris LAS. The whole network is at Jupiter Signal. And of course, we have the subreddit, coderadio.reddit.com. Try to check that before each episode. And our main show site at coder.show. Thanks for being here. See you next week.